Okay. Hey everyone and welcome back to the Buffalo Plus YouTube channel. Jenna Cottrell giggling alongside Dan Fates here. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It was it's 3.33 mm -hmm. on Wednesday afternoon as we record this. Yes. Let's start with the best news of the day. Damar Hamlin being released from the hospital uh, from Buffalo General. Yeah, I think it's just huge news as he continues he, his recovery. The team talking about today just how much that means. And I think it was Dion saying yeah. like, there's no place he would rather be than in his own bed. And the fact that the, that the progress has gone so well that he's able to do that. Josh Allen talking today on Wednesday after practice saying that he's going to set up a visit with mm -hmm. him. A lot of other teammates as well and just I mean, what a scary situation last week was to be where this team is at, though, and for DeMar Hamlin to be feeling how he is now. It's just an incredible process. And once again, just shout out to all the medical staff because, I mean, we saw it today. We were at practice, and Denny Kellington out there. Just passing just, out water. Just smiling. The Bills, one of the Bills trainers, just smiling. You could just tell. And it's like that guy goes back to doing his job like the other trainers do, but they saved a life. Saved life last week, just handing out waters, getting the guys all ready for, for playoffs. Um, Dion added to the fact of it felt like a weight has been lifted off yeah. them, that they don't have to pull it, that they're still, obviously, DeMar is still in their thoughts, they're still continuing their prayers, but it's not as heavy to pull. And I think that's important as yeah. this team has been on an emotional roller coaster the last two weeks, um, actually the whole season. You know, Micah Hyde even talked about going back to the, the, the mass shooting at the tops. Yeah. Um, they finally are getting some good news. Damar Hamlin's home, Micah Hyde returning to practice. Yeah. And I think before we get into to him returning, Sean McDermott said, do you feel like the tides are starting to turn? And he, he laughed at the question from the reporter and then said, like, oh, you guys are funny. And he's you like, guys are good. <laughs> he goes, you know, this isn't a soap opera. Like, we've got a game to play. And that's all that we're worried about. And yeah. I think that we haven't we've talked so little about football. We really, yeah, absolutely. But that just goes to show how much has been going on that's so much bigger than football. Yeah. But the fact now is that things have kind of settled down. Again, everything's moving in the right direction where this team can kind of turn their focus yeah. back to what's going to be happening on Sunday. And now it is the playoffs. Every game, it's win playoffs. and continue. Playoffs. Win and continue your season. And I think just where things are at now, Dion talked about it. I think this whole team, Mitch Morris even saying, they have the chance to now recalibrate Yep. and get ready because they can have peace of mind knowing that things are moving in the right direction. Yeah, Dion talking uh, at length about having the discussions with his teammates about everybody. there are a lot of teams that they're home, yeah. that they're back home. And he goes, I don't want to be home. I want to be here. And I, and I want to be here for the next month and all of those things. And I think that puts that into perspective. Another guy that is back here and is back on the field is now former coach Micah Hyde. <laughs> um, he said he is a dog ass coach. Yeah, I laughed so hard. I don't know what exactly that means, but he said he's a good coach, said he gave some some nuggets to players, but he doesn't think that their record is completely indicative of how well of a coach he is. Yeah, I think he was being humble, but uh, a dog ass coach. That's a new dog one. ass coach. I've not heard of that phrase dog ass, but I will say I think obviously all along he's wanted to be on the field, not on the sidelines. And today, just the joy in his face. And I know joy might sound ridiculous, but he literally talked about how he felt like last night he couldn't sleep because yeah. it felt like Christmas. He was just so excited. First day of school. Yeah, to get back out on the field and just that feeling and that thought process. Look, he is a limited participant right now. He had that neck surgery in early October. I mean, he talked about with the team, I guess, the fact that he wanted to be back for the playoffs yeah. and all this stuff. But to see the work that's being put in now and how much work had to be put in to yeah. be in the position he is. I will say though, he talked about how the decision for him to go back on the field in terms of mind. playing in a game is not up to him. It's up to his doctors. He is not playing on Sunday against Miami. We yeah. we did our best to push for the answer of, well, if you guys win then next weekend. And yeah. he's like, listen, it's not up to me. It, it's up to the doctors. Yeah. But he did talk about, he met with his doctors. I think he said last week and he said, <laughs> doctor walked in the room and he goes, and they both just started laughing because he knew what the doctor was going to try and say. And it, like I said, a lot of times after that injury that he had, it's a six month recovery. So that that's March. So it, he says it's completely healed. His neck injury is completely healed. It's just a matter of getting the clearance from the doctors to move forward. But it would be a a massive boost. This is something that he targeted um, for coming back. And Dion said, you know, about all the good news that this Bills team has gotten. He it's like it's like Christmas in the new year. He goes, it's yeah. Christmas in January. Yeah. You know, Demar's home. Mike is back. Um, but switching gears and transitioning to, to, to playoffs. I mean, this is a – the Bills got more good news today, Jenna. Tua Tonga Vailoa has been ruled out. Yeah. As of right now, it looks like it's Skylar Thompson that's supposed to start for Miami, yeah. the seventh-round rookie or undrafted rookie, um, as well as Teddy Bridgewater. They're, they're hoping he can go. But as of right now, it's a backup quarterback. Yeah, I mean, I think – 
you don't want to overlook any team, obviously, because it's the playoffs. But when you look at what teams they could have been matched up against and knowing the, the talent that Miami has, but with Tua not being on the field, it's just a difference. There is a complete difference yeah. in what the playmakers are able to do when it's I always want to say Chip Skylark, which is so random. But so weird. Skylar Thompson, what he is, what his limitations are, and you would imagine there, and we've seen that there are many of yep. them. But at the same point, um, the focus can't change. But this team, we've seen the line move in terms of Vegas. What's expected? I think also the game being at 1 o'clock on Sunday says mm-hmm. a lot about what the expectations are for this game. Look, the Bills, we're going to have to play. But this game, when you look at it, they're in a good position. That is a very good way of putting it. Um, they are now 13 and a half point favorites. Uh, we had joked around in the media room today. I can't think of very many quarterback disparities as large as this yeah. in the playoffs. And the first one that came to mind to me was 2020 when it was Tom Brady versus um, Heineke. Taylor Heineke. But that still wasn't as big as this. Um, yeah. And I know a bunch of people are talking about you know Blake Bortles against Tom Brady. Blake Bortles was a third overall pick, yeah. and, and there were a lot of guys talking about Tebow in, in, in against Brady. Tebow's a first-round draft pick. Like, this guy is a sixth or seventh or an undrafted. He's a late-round pick out of Kansas yeah. State, I believe. Um, just the Bills have a massive advantage going into this game. Also, the understanding of this is Mike McDaniel's first playoff game as well, and, yeah. and that's, a big, that's a big thing. And we asked everybody kind of about what their first experience was like, and you asked Sean McDermott, like, what has he learned yeah. since he was in Jacksonville six years ago? Yeah, and I can't – what did he say? I can't remember. He talked about how, like, you don't know what you don't know. And how, oh, and how, yes, and, and I, thought that, I thought that was amazing too because it's true. Like, yep. let's be real. You don't know what you don't know. And he's, he talked about how you always have to continue growing and continuing mm-hmm. to kind of – They, the, I mean, the team talks about the growth mindset, yep. which I've never really heard that phrase before coming don't and really understand covering it. the bills. But I think this is a, a notch of that of, like, you have to continue to adapt and learn things. And I think this Bills team has done a tremendous job of that under Sean McDermott. And I think Sean McDermott is a great example of that. But at the same point, like, you're right. This is Mike McDaniel's first playoff coach, yep. coaching job as a head coach. Obviously, there's going to be a ton of adversity having yep. your backup, backup quarterback probably be starting. Um, but, I mean, it, it's you, you have to guard against, though, I will say this. Yep. You have to guard against letting – your expectations for this game and what this Dolphins team can do be completely like, oh, it's sure. fine. We can just walk all over. Sure. Because that's not how things work in the NFL. I, I kind of was interesting t- hearing Mitch Morse talk because um, I asked him, like, how do you recalibrate and understand this is a dangerous Dolphins team? And a lot of the similar answers were what we had heard going into the Bengals game. What we had heard about massive game. It felt like a playoff game. And Mitch yeah. Morse was the one to be like, yeah, like we understand the implications of this game. The Bills understand what's at stake. Yeah. It is win or go home. But Mitch said, like, you can't lose your personality. Like, you can't stop having conversations. Like, you can't not be yourself and what got you here. Understand, though, everything's heightened and the stakes are massive. But besides that, be yourself. And I I thought that was an understanding. And Dion added, too, about Sean McDermott as we finished talking about him, that he said he's for the boys and that as a player, that's the best thing you want. And he says he has loosened up over the years. I believe that, too. I think McDermott, when he got here, it was like, this is the way I want to do it. I've always wanted to be a head coach. And we know McDermott to be incredibly disciplined, Mm -hmm. incredibly methodical, all of these things. And when you have a a personality of team, of players, 53-plus guys, you kind of have to be able to take some criticism, not even Mm -hmm. criticism, but be able to take some constructive criticism. And I loved this from Mitch Morris when he said, McDermott asks for your input Mm -hmm. without an answer already in his mind. And I think of how many times we all have asked for input with a certain answer in our own minds. And I think that I thought to myself like, wow, that's that's a pretty interesting thing and pretty perceptive yeah. of his teammates or his team is able to pick up on I that agree. because that shows how he genuinely does want to learn more. Yeah. So in recap, great day here at One Bills Drive. DeMar Hamlin is back home. Micah Hyde returned to practice. So did Jamison Crowder. I think that's another thing to note. Yeah. Neither of them will play Sunday, but they opened up their 21-day window off the IR. So we talked about it in a podcast a while back. I said, I think Micah Hyde's going to try and return. I do too. I think that he could return possibly next weekend. Today we, was another step in that direction. Yep. And one that we, we have talked about, we kind of whispered at, about it on the Buffalo Plus yep. channel. And then today was like, okay, this is trending in the direction of it is more than a possibility. One last thing. I had tweeted out a video of Josh Allen doing his quarterback race. 
Okay, he does it every most days. He races the quarterbacks to their position. Yeah. Um, he he pretended to grab his hamstring. And, which he's done before. Which he it's a fake. He he was faking. Yeah. It's a celebration that he has done before. Um, people freaked out. We're all on edge. I get that. We're, we've all had a, a, a rough two weeks. We're all on edge. The joke yeah. didn't land. Yeah. The joke didn't land. So I deleted the tweet, not because he's injured, but because it was a joke that wasn't landing. And yes. I just wanted to correct that. Yeah. Maybe next time read the room. I did not read the room it's well. Okay. Hand up. Okay. My bad. So Josh Allen's fine. I wish fine. you would have ran that by me. I don't run much by you. <laughs> yeah, so that's fair. Yeah. All right. Well, plenty more coverage throughout the week. Obviously, our Buffalo Plus live show on Thursday, yes. as well as the game on Sunday. The whole team's going to be up there. Yes. Never happened whoa, whoa. before. <laughs> no, I'm just saying we've never had all three of us yeah. at a game. So prepare for a triple blog post game. I was uh, wondering where you were going. A, a three headed monster of a post game blog will be coming uh, after the game on Sunday. But that is Sunday. We got plenty more coverage throughout the week. For Jenna, I'm Dan. <laughs> To Mike back in the studio. It's <laughs> running the show. Oh, but, wait. And before you go, please be sure if you enjoy our content to like, comment, and subscribe. I was going to get there. Oh, I didn't think so. You oh, were like gonna... wrapping everything up. Yeah, but that's usually what I was going to say last. So appreciate it. Like, comment, subscribe. Um, but clothing I wanna, line. I do want to say, like, I don't want people to feel like we're like demanding them. If you enjoy our stuff, like, comment, and subscribe. Yeah. You know? Do it. Yeah. You should do it. All right. Appreciate it so much. We'll catch you next time here on the Buffalo Plus YouTube channel. Just do it.